And copy that, T uh, LC. And he has low flow chill zones in progress. Copy that. Check step 335 complete. So right now the main engine system chill down underway. This again to uh, prepare the propellant lines into the uh, two uh, main engines on the first stage of the orbital vehicle uh, to get them to a proper temperature to ensure efficient fuel delivery once uh, the time of ignition comes. Next major milestone coming up on just about and uh, OLL, this is LC. 17 minutes uh, when we will get the poll to proceed with final countdown, that coming uh, just about 12 minutes before uh, ignition. Uh, yeah, copy the, uh, the loading's in progress. I'll let you know when we uh, stop. Okay, roger that. And elect one, this is LC on countdown one. Go ahead, LC. Yeah, step 340, can you verify no ignition commands are present? So this will actually be the third Cygnus cargo craft uh, to travel to the International Space Station, the second under their resupply contract. Uh, Cygnus itself, uh, a free-flying free spacecraft uh, that was developed for these cargo missions by Orbital Sciences. Uh, the craft itself uh, consists of a pressurized module where all the cargo is and then a service module, uh, which was developed from uh, some of the uh, other spacecrafts uh, currently uh, designed and flown by Orbital Sciences. Uh, like the pressurized module itself, though, uh, actually shares heritage with uh, a number of other uh, components on board. The International Space Station are used to supply it. Uh, among them, the multi-purpose logistics module, which was used uh, by multiple shuttle flights to carry uh, cargo uh, in the cargo bay of the shuttle mission of the shuttle to the International Space Station. Uh, also, the uh, European ATV uh, and nodes two and three on board the International Space Station. All of them develop uh, by. Thales Alenia uh, in Italy. Uh, the standard configuration of the uh, Cygnus cargo vehicle can carry uh, upwards of 4,400 pounds. And again, an enhanced variant uh, will be coming off the line uh, later on uh, in orbital's flights and be able to carry just shy of 6,000 pounds. Uh, as mentioned, uh, the service module itself um, uh, derived from a lot of uh, other technologies used by orbital sciences, uh, has a number of uh, reaction jets able to uh, raise and lower uh, the cargo craft's orbit, whether it's on its chase towards the International Space Station or departing uh, for an eventual fiery re-entry into orbit. Uh, on board, it has uh, all of its environmental control systems necessary for uh, providing a pressurized cabin to maintain uh, all of the um, crew supplies, cargo, hardware, and other scientific experiments found on board, uh, as well as uh, all the necessary guidance and navigation and avionic systems, a totally self-contained spacecraft. As we heard John mention, uh, a couple of new systems on board Orbital 2 for this mission, among them a LIDAR or a, a, a laser, a laser uh, radar system used for uh, rendezvous and docking. Uh, this one actually um, Uh, this one actually being known as TRIDAR, um, having a uh, proven heritage of being flown back on three space shuttle missions uh, before that craft was retired. Uh, also uh, employing a new S-band radio uh, for telemetry and commanding uh, of the spacecraft, uh, much more lightweight on uh, providing a higher power capability. Uh, so Orbital Science is just uh, incrementally improving the technology in their resupply craft as they look uh, to increase its capabilities uh, to, to deliver cargo to the International Space Station.
some of the images that we're seeing now, uh, the fairing being installed onto uh, the uh, rocket with the Cygnus II resupply ship on board. The fairing itself, uh, about 9.9 .9 meters in height, 3.9 meters in diameter. It's there to uh, protect the Cygnus during uh, all the stages of ascent into orbit. That fairing will separate uh, after about 5 minutes and 19 seconds into flight. At that point, uh, the uh, Stage 1 will have already shut down and separated. Uh, the Cygnus craft will be at an altitude of about 114 statute miles. Uh, following that fairing separation, uh, the second stage uh, will ignite uh, the solid-fueled second stage carrying the uh, Cygnus into its initial orbit. And back now with that live view of the pad, 23 minutes, 45 seconds from launch uh, out at the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. And LC OLL on countdown one. Go ahead, OLL. We've completed RP-1 loading, and the uh, reported level is uh, 16 of the targeted level 16. Copy that, OLL. We'll go ahead and check 337. Core 1 LC. Countdown 1, provide recommendation to F1 end level. LC Core 1, fuel level does not require adjustment. Copy that, check step 330. So getting good fuel level checks. RP-1, the highly refined kerosene, also known as rocket fuel, used to power this first stage along with uh, its oxidizer liquid oxygen. And launch team, at this time I'd like to pull for final FTS power on and arm command test. Safety? Safety is go. FSO. FSO is go. Ops 1. Ops 1 is go. Elect 1. Elect 1 is go. FTS. FTS is go. Launch team is go for final FTS power and arm command test. So a great shot uh, of Antares on the pad there now as we continue to march towards our liftoff, now 22 minutes away from uh, ignition of that first stage. FSO LC countdown. Meanwhile, the Expedition 40 crew flying overhead. Uh, the station itself uh, will be 260 statute miles just over northwest Australia uh, at the time of launch. If you look at the ground track here, in about 20 minutes it'll be um, on that bottom line there just over northwest Australia. Cygnus will then race after it for about two days before catching up on Wednesday, at which point it will be grappled by Expedition 40 Commander Steve Swanson uh, with Alexander Gers backing him up inside of the station's cupola. Wallop, CT site on, turn four radiating. Copy FSO, we'll check step 348 at this time. So as talked about a little bit earlier, one of the uh, primary needs for these resupply crafts are to constantly fly uh, new scientific research to the crews on board the International Space Station. Uh, some of the highlights found uh, on Cygnus today uh, include a new flock of uh, microsatellites from Planet Labs. Uh, they flew back on uh, the Orbital 1 mission in January, launching uh, an initial fleet of 28 CubeSats, uh, individually known as Dove satellites, uh, that were uh, jettisoned out from the International Space Station. They use uh, this collective of uh, small, uh, relatively inexpensive satellites, um, and they will be joined by uh, 28 additional Dove satellites, uh, known as Flock 1B, uh, flying today on Orb 2. You go to apply external power to the FTSA and FTSB. FTSA.
TSA. As they're deployed out of the two flocks work in unison to capture imagery of the entire planet on a much more frequent basis than is currently uh, available. Uh, these images, um, like many Earth observation uh, tasks from the International Space Station itself, uh, can be used to help identify and track natural disasters. Uh, the station getting a lot of uh, fantastic hurricane imagery uh, with the uh, storms over the last two weeks and also help coordinate responses to those, uh, as well as uh, improving environmental and agricultural monitoring and management. Roger that. We'll check step 351. Another satellite technology demonstration flying on Orb 2 today, uh, known as Tech EDSAT 4, part of a large ongoing study uh, known as the Small Payload Quick Return System, uh, trying to come up with a new means of returning small payloads in a temperature and pressure controlled environment from the station. Uh, currently, uh, the SpaceX Dragon, uh, the only large scale way to return samples from the International Space Station. Uh, Tech EDSAT 4 uh, will be deploying from the uh, Japanese experiment module. Primary objectives to, to develop a uh, drag device, also known as an exobreak, uh, which will uh, help slow the vehicle and uh, send it through the Earth's atmosphere safely. Uh, engineers hoping to um, use those exo brakes to eventually enable small sample return from the station uh, or other orbital platforms to Earth. Also potentially uh, could be used in the uh, not too distant future for landing uh, small payloads on the Martian uh, surface. Remove. Continue tone four when function removed. Arm on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. Plus one, plus two, arm removed, tone four continued. FTS, verify FTS arm indication, telemetry. LC, FTS arm indication verified. FSO, verify FTS arm indication. FTS arm indication. FTS, verify FTS currently indicates safe and receiving tone four and verify FTS SNA and FTLU status indicates safe. FTS safe. So FTS standing for the Flight Termination System, one of the safeguards for uh, today's launch. And FTS uh, status on SNAs and FTLU? LC, this is FTS. FTS safe. And FTS step 358, looking for status on the SNAs and the FTLU. LC, this is FTS. Do you copy? FTS, FTS, LC, countdown one. FTS, this is LC, do you copy? Yeah, I've got you loud and clear, how me? Sorry, I'm having some com, com problems over here. I hear you loud and clear. And F FTS, looking for confirmations at 357 and 358. FTS safe. FTS safe and arm and FTLU safe. Copy that, FTS, we'll check step 358 complete. GNC1, LC, step 359, provide status of upper level winds. LC, GNC-1, upper-level winds are green. Copy that, GNC-1, check 359. The team at the Wallops Range Control Center continuing to check through their uh, milestones heading towards that launch at 11.52 a.m. Central, currently 16 minutes away. The weather continuing to look good uh, out of uh, the Wallace Flight Facility, thankfully. Um, a couple of storms, as you heard earlier, uh, impacting the rollout earlier this week, but definitely cooperating over the weekend to finish uh, preparing the rocket and everything looking good, a 90% chance of favorable weather for launch today. Just a few minutes now from uh, the expected time for the poll uh, for the final countdown.
So as mentioned in the beginning of the show, it'll be about a 10 minute climb to orbit. Uh, the first stage firing for the first four minutes before shutting down and separating that liquid first stage, powering uh, Cygnus to its uh, initial altitude of 70 miles. Uh, then the fairings will separate uh, before the second stage is ready to ignite. CMDLC that solid, one, step three, six, uh, solid six, rocket motor second stage will deliver Cygnus into its uh, initial orbit of about 159 or 160 statute miles uh, before Cygnus will separate from it, deploy its solar arrays, test its uh, reaction jets real quickly, and then be on its way uh, for its two-day journey towards the International Space Station. All of that today should take about 10 minutes. So fairly quick climb to orbit for the resupply craft. And launch team LC on countdown one. Be advised, poll for final countdown and MES medium flow will occur at T minus 12 minutes. Check step 361. And just now you hear the, the call coming for that poll for final countdown coming at T minus 12 minutes. Right now, we're about 13 minutes and 40 seconds away from launch. This is CMD on countdown one. Go ahead, CMD. Our sickness is on internal power and nominal. Roger that, CMD. We'll check 360 complete. Getting the confirmation Cygnus has been switched to internal power. So that final poll coming up in just under a minute now at T minus 11 minutes. Uh, the transporter erector launcher uh, armed uh, will be armed for rapid retract about five minutes before launch. Uh, the interior's avionic systems uh, responsible for guiding the rocket will be switched over to internal power. Uh, T minus three minutes, uh, the auto sequence or the terminal count will begin. Uh, T minus two minutes, the propellant tanks will be pressurized. Uh, the pressurized, um, pressurizing agent uh, helium gas, uh, T0, uh, will be the main engine ignition. Just about two seconds after that, we will see the first motion and liftoff of Antares. Now standing by for that. Final countdown poll. And launch team LC on countdown one. At this time, I'd like the poll to proceed with final countdown and medium flow chill down. MES one? MES is go. GC. GC is go. Ace. Ace is go. GSO. GSO is go. RSO. RSO is go. TD. TD is go. Mars. Mars is go. CMD. CMD is go. LD. LD is go. Orbital. LC, this has been a well-executed countdown. We are ready to deliver another load of cargo to the space station. Orbital is go. And launch team is go to proceed with final countdown and medium flow chill down. Check step 362. Site control, LC, countdown one. Arm tell for rapid retract. And LC, site control copy is in work. Launch team, be advised, phase four dynamic limits will be active at T minus 10 minutes. Check 365. And there we have it, the final poll uh, to proceed with final countdown. All cleared, every position a go. Everything looking on track now under 11 minutes from launch. The team at the Wallops Range Control Center reporting, all systems looking good. This is a close-up of that transporter erector launcher uh, arm. 
uh, currently armed uh, as of uh, T-minus 11 for its rapid retract uh, from the Antares rocket. Just about five minutes from now, the avionics on board the launch vehicle will be switched over to internal power. Following that, at T-minus three minutes, we'll begin the terminal countdown of the rocket. Uh, LC, MES-1, uh, medium flow started. Check LC, enable stage one controller and ACS VDMs. LC OPS one in work. Stage one controller VDMs enabled. Upper ACS, internal power on. Lower ACS, internal power on. Step complete. And elect one, verify and telemetry. Stage one and ACS VDMs are enabled and verify VDM voltage. Stage one controller and ACS VDMs enabled. VDM voltage is nominal. Check 368. Site control status on arming of tail for rapid retract. And LC site control, we just got the arming uh, verified and complete. Tail LC, confirm tail arm for rapid retract. LC tail, tail. So the tail again, the transporter erector launcher arm has been armed for rapid retract. Eight minutes and counting to Antares launch. And site control LC, step 369, confirm GN2 conditioning has started. And LC site control, uh, we can confirm GN2 conditioning has it been initiated. Roger that, check 369. So again, marching close to launch now, we're coming up on T-minus seven minutes. The team already completed their final poll. All systems go. The range looking good for the launch of Antares today. Beautiful day out at the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia for a launch. Weather cooperating with a 90% chance of favorable conditions. A nice break from uh, the storms that plagued uh, the launch teams throughout the week getting ready. They were able to uh, persevere and get uh, Antares and Cygnus ready, loaded and locked uh, for its launch to the International Space Station. Six minutes, 40 seconds away from liftoff. And again, just to recap, following a successful flight today, it'll be a three-day trip uh, towards the International Space Station. Cygnus on days two and three will continue its ascent. Uh, and then flight day four, uh, actually on Wednesday, uh, it'll be in range to be grappled by the crew on board the International Space Station, then attached by robotics controllers here in Houston, controlling the robotic arm to the Earth-facing side of Harmony. ECS has transferred from air to GN2. And LC site control, we can confirm transfer to uh, air uh, to the GN2 confirmed. Roger that. Check 370. No. 
now approaching five minutes until launch. Expecting the calls for the Antares Avionics switching over to internal power. Avionics to internal power. LC Ops 1 in work. All internal power on selected. Standing by five seconds. All external power off. Step complete. I like one verify avionics internal power nominal. Confirmation Antares in avionics GD. responsible for controlling the rocket now on internal power. Range is green. And Ops 1 open FTS umbi loop and verify green indication. LC Ops 1 FTS umbi loop is open and green. FTS verify FTLUs are armed with no receiver arm and no FTLU destruct. LC, this is FTS. FTLU and FTS receiver indications are nominal. Ops 1, you go to activate, arm enable. LC Ops 1, arm enable key rotated, indicator illuminated. And Ops 1, you go to send all arm command. Copy LC and work. T minus four minutes now from launch. At three minutes, the terminal count will begin. LC Ops On the loops, you're hearing FTLU, the flight termination logic unit, and FTS, the flight termination system responsible for safing the rocket throughout its ascent. SNAs and ODMs all armed. Roger that. 379 will not be required for today's op. Phase 5 dynamic limits will be active at T minus 3 minutes. Like 1, I'll wait for your calls for steps 381, 382, and 383. Now standing by for the beginning of the auto sequencing start in the terminal count. We have auto sequence start. Control has transferred to CSOE. Elect one verify nominal ODM bus volts and currents. ODM bus voltages and currents nominal. Roger that. Core one, away for your confirmation. Preliminary, preliminary LO2 locks. Crank pressurization started. Roger that. Check 385. Like one, verify. Siggy ready to configure for flight. Coming up on the propellant take pressurization using helium gas inside. Disable automated blended to pure inertial handoffs. Let's be responsible for delivering the RP-1 rocket fuel and liquid oxygen uh, for combustion in the two main engines. Manual handoff sent. Copy that. And launch team, we're at T minus one minute, 45 seconds on my mark. Mark. Ops 2, you go to disable ME1 and ME2 heaters. Heaters disabled. Roger that. And core 1 minute, 30 seconds to launch. Preliminary fuel tank press. Copy. Again, T minus 0 will be main engine and ignition. They'll do about 2 seconds of health checks before uh, liftoff will actually take place. Preliminary fuel tank pressurization started. T minus one minute on my mark. Mark. Now under a minute from Antares liftoff from the Wallops flight facility in Virginia. All systems go, the range clear, everything looking good. Minus 30 seconds. Mark. Now under 30 seconds, stand by for that first ignition. The two main engines on the first stage will be igniting. T 
T-minus 10 seconds. CBC slew test initiated. Mark. And 10 seconds to launch. Five, four, three, two, one. And we have ignition. And we have liftoff of Antares for the Orb 2 mission from the Wall Flight Facility delivering Cygnus on its second commercial resupply service to the International Space Station. Antares off the pad. The SS Janus Voss on its way with the Orbital 2 Science uh, Research Supply Mission to the International Space Station. DVC nominal. Attitude is nominal during flyout. Core pressures are nominal in the commodity tank. We're at 108% power. Back to 104 percent. Engines are nominal. Attitude is nominal. TVC performance is nominal. Getting good first stage performance. The Antares Warp 2 mission. And the first stage will fire for just about four minutes into flight. Attitude is nominal. Engines remain nominal. Power is nominal on our power buses, electrical power buses. Hydraulic TVC performance is good. We're at 20,000. The two first stage engines firing successfully, carrying Antares through the clouds. Attitude is nominal. Core pressures are nominal. We're adding helium into the ohlage volume of the pressure in tanks to keep them up to pressure. Passing through max Q now. Attitude is nominal. Engine performance is nominal on the HA26 engine. TVC performance is nominal. Right now we're switching to a launch animation. The rocket itself lost in view through the clouds, continuing to perform nominally though, as expected. Engine's still at 100%. Engines are nominal. Coming up on two minutes since launch. 115 seconds into the mission. We're roughly two minutes from Miko. Core pressures are nominal. Miko, the main engine cut off uh, the end of the stage one flight into orbit. Attitude is nominal. Altitude is 100,000 feet. Engine performance is nominal. Avionics power is nominal. Attitude is good. Core pressures are good. And TVCs are tracking very well. Very small steering commands on the engines today. Uh, overall, Antares performance is green. Oh, coming up now in two minutes, 50 seconds since liftoff. Just about one more minute until stage one shutdown. Attitude is nominal. Just a few seconds after shutdown, stage one will separate. We're one minute to Miko. Engine performance is nominal to date. Attitude is nominal. Altitude 200,000 feet. And LOX tank is uh, getting additional valves open to continue the pressurization sequence. All is good. Attitude is nominal. We're about 30 seconds to Miko. We have started throttle down of the engines to keep the axial acceleration below limits. TVC slew maneuver started. Attitude is nominal. Altitude 300,000 feet. And we're coming up on Miko. Pressures are good. Engines at 58% thrust. And we have Miko. Stage one throttling down, main engine cut off. PSS disabled. We have stage one separation. And stage one separation confirmed. The two main engines doing their job successfully. Uh, close period here before we will separate the fairing. At this point, the rocket traveling uh, well over 9,000 miles an hour. Okay, closed loop guidance has engaged. Uh, stage two ignition time is 339 mission time. We're currently at uh, 275. So another minute. Uh, 
Okay, so under a minute now from the solid second stage rocket igniting, continuing to carry Cygnus into orbit. Velocity is at 19,525 feet per second, which is right in the box. Altitude is 150 kilometers. Antares is coasting between uh, stage one and stage two burns. When we get up to a higher altitude, we will separate the fairing and the inner stage. Avionics power is nominal on the power buses. Antares performance is green. Pegasus, Antares continues to coast. Wrong rocket there. Attitude is nominal during the coast period. So at this point, fairing separation coming. And now we have interstage separation. We're preparing for the stage two ignition. And we have, pro we have positive confirmation of stage two ignition. Antares is thrusting to put Cygnus into orbit. I'm taking some telemetry here, it's in the center here. Battery voltage is good. Attitude is nominal during stage two burn. The rocket at this point, uh, or Cygnus, over 116 statute miles in altitude. Avionics power is nominal. Attitude is nominal. Altitude 180 kilometers. Antares performance nominal under stage two burn. The stage two engine will raise the altitude into its initial orbital insertion of just around 160 statute miles. Stage two performance is good. Everything continuing to go as planned, the rocket and the cargo craft looking good. Attitude is nominal. We see some ACS firings to control the roll axis. Pitch and yaw are controlled by the thrust vector controller. Altitude is 190 kilometers. Attitude is nominal. Okay, we're roughly a minute from burnout. Attitude is nominal. Altitude 195 kilometers. So the second stage, as you can hear, continuing to raise Cygnus into a higher and higher orbit. Getting good usable data. Attitude is nominal, and Tari's performance is green under stage two burn. Avionics power is nominal. And we have stage two tail off and burnout. So the second stage finishing up its job. Vehicle now oriented south for payload separation. We will uh, settle rates and point the Cygnus in preparation for the separation of the Cygnus. LC DPM countdown one. Stand by DPM. DPM meet me on countdown two. And Antares performance is nominal. And cold gas ACS is being used to point the Antares upper stack in preparation for Cygnus separation. Avionics power is nominal. That separation anticipated to come just a little over a minute from now. Following separation, it'll be uh, at an altitude of about 154 statute miles. At that point, it'll begin to deploy the solar arrays and do all the initial on-orbit checkouts. Attitude is nominal. We're achieving the attitude in preparation for separation. Entire status is green. Orbit, uh, orbit achieved looks very good. We're just standing by for separation of the Cygnus from the upper stage of the Antares. Approximately 30 seconds to separation. Avionics power buses look strong. And we're receiving telemetry data through the Bermuda tracking station and relayed here to the Wallace Control Center. 
roughly 10 seconds to separation. Attitude is nominal. And we have Cygnus spacecraft separation. And we are beginning the collision examination avoidance maneuver using the cold gas ACS. Couple of claps there from the Wallops Range Control Center confirming Cygnus has separated successfully is in its initial orbit. Here you can see a quick animation, uh, the second stage performing as expected, Cygnus separating in its initial orbit now of about 154 statute miles, traveling at a speed of over 16,700 miles an hour. Very good orbit achieved today, 191 by 284 kilometers. Uh, inclination is right on the money at 51.64 degrees. And uh, good luck to our Cygnus partners in rendezvous with the ISS. Okay, launch TMLC on uh, countdown one. Uh, be advised, we're going to continue to run with our post-launch checklist here in the LCC. Maintain net protocol until we have all stations released. And site control, LC. LC site control. And with that, a flawless 10-minute ride to orbit on the back of the Antares rocket carrying Cygnus into its initial orbit. The SS Janus Voss now well on its way towards the International Space Station with over 3,300 pounds of supplies for the Expedition 40 crew. All indications pointing to fantastic, uh, perfect execution by the first and second stages. The fairing separating successfully from the rocket and revealing Cygnus uh, to the vacuum of space. Ops 1, LC, you go to deactivate, arm enable, and verify. LC, Ops 1, arm enable, deactivated. And Ops 1, can you disable local launch enable button at the failsafe panel, verify local indicators, extinguished. Ops 1, launch enable removed. Roger that, check 404 and 405. Core 1LC, countdown. And GSO step 406, you go to disable local launch enable button at the fail safe panel, verify, verify LC, local indicator is uh, extinguished. Stand by, Core 1. LCGSO on countdown one, would you repeat, please? Yeah, step four or six, disable local launch enable button at the failsafe panel, verify local indicators, extinguished. Launch enable button is extinguished. Copy that, check four or six. And uh, core one LC, steps uh, four or two and four or three, uh, direct use noise to power off their MS and FMS GE equipment. In work. Copy and work. So now the flight control team going through their final uh, launch checklist. Uh, the next major thing on board uh, on the list for Cygnus will be the uh, deployment of the solar arrays which power the vehicle uh, throughout its three-day rendezvous with the International Space Station. Ground mock, external power off. Check 408. Orb TM, report when telemetry lock's been lost at the DECOM for avionics, uh, MC, and Stage 1 streams. LC or PM, the uh, lock has been lost. Archive stopped. Copy that. And uh, so you can stop telemetry archive at the TCOM. Uh, DCOM will check 409 and 410. And ORP TM, you can stop LCC telemetry, uh, uh, the, T, the DTS distributor logging, and you can stop G2 telemetry recording. Copy that. Recorder stopped. And logging stopped? And logging stopped. Copy that. Ops 2, uh, record, uh, report the power supply volts and currents in step uh, 413. Vic power supply 18, voltage is 29.97, current is zero. Vic power supply 19, voltage is 28.99, current is 1.14. Vic power supply 22. Voltage is 27.98. Current is 2.31. And Ops 2, can I get a read back on uh, power supply 18 voltage? Voltage is 29.97. And I copy that read back. We'll check 413.
And Ops 2, you can power off the lithium ion battery, battery pot monitor power at this time. It's already been powered down. Okay, Roger that. Check 414. And so the first solar array on Cygnus has been deployed. Standing by for confirmation of the second. If uh, indication not as expected. Uh, yeah, LC Ops 1. Uh, all SNAs. So again, one of two solar arrays on the Cygnus craft has been deployed at this point. Standing by for confirmation of the second. So again, standing by for confirmation of the second solar array's deployment on board Cygnus, the first being done successfully. Everything going as expected by the book with this launch and deployment of the cargo craft today. Spirits high there at the Wallops Launch and Range Control Center out at the flight facility in Virginia. And Terry's getting the vehicle up there without a hitch. Um, the team's uh, battling some weather throughout the week and few technical issues, but everything going as expected today, not tracking any issues. The vehicle in its initial orbit. So still standing by for that uh, confirmation. It can typically take about 20 minutes um, for the solar arrays to get deployed successfully following orbital insertion. The vehicle will be executing a number of uh, DV or delta velocity burns over the next few days. Uh, these done to uh, raise Cygnus's orbit incrementally as it races around and catches up to the International Space Station.
So again, continuing to stand by for that confirmation that both solar arrays have been deployed. Uh, the orbital teams in the final steps of locking in the secondary array, the primary already locked in and in place. Cygnus uh, will prepare itself for a number of uh, delta velocity burns to raise its orbit and catch up with the International Space Station over the next few days. Once it arrives, it'll be captured by the crew on board the International Space Station using uh, the Space Station's robotic remote uh, manipulator system, the robotic arm, also known as Canada Arm 2. Uh, Steve Swanson uh, will be at the helm, being backed up by Alexander Gerst. Uh, once the spacecraft arrives uh, and they do a final go, no-go, once it's about 39 uh, feet or so away from the International Space Station, they'll reach out uh, with that robotic arm to uh, grapple uh, with the Cygnus cargo craft. They'll be operating from the station's cupola, which gives out uh, the best view of these visiting vehicles and the robotic operations. Uh, once they're able to reach out and grapple with it, uh, they'll then hand over the reins to uh, the teams down here in Mission Control Houston, uh, who will be responsible for uh, maneuvering the vehicle into its final spot. You just saw a quick view of the cupola there, uh, but Cygnus will be docked to the uh, Earth-facing side of the Harmony module, and that uh, final mm -hmm. uh, berthing uh, activity will be done by uh, controllers here in Mission Control Houston. And we'll have all of our coverage times to that a little bit uh, later towards the end of today's launch broadcast.
So we've gotten confirmation now from the orbital team, both solar arrays locked in, uh, functioning normally. Uh, so with that, uh, Cygnus on its way towards the International Space Station, a flawless flight to orbit this morning from Wallops out in Virginia. Uh, the SS Janus Voss carrying 3,300 pounds of supplies to the Expedition 40 crew. And with that, we're wrapping up uh, with today's launch coverage. A couple of quick programming notes for you. Um, today we'll have a uh, post-launch briefing uh, where members of the media can interact. Uh, that news conference coming up uh, in just about a little over an hour from now at 1.30 p.m. Central Time, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time here on NASA TV. And with Cygnus on its way towards the International Space Station, the next uh, major television milestone for that will be uh, Rendezvous Grapple and Birthing Day. And we'll be bringing that on Wednesday uh, here again uh, live on NASA TV. Here's a rundown of all of our coverage times. At 4.15 a.m., we'll open up with capture coverage uh, with the expected capture by the robotic arm coming at 5.37 a.m. Central. We'll then break away while the uh, robotics controllers get ready to birth at 2 the Earth facing side of Harmony coming back on at 7.30 a.m. Central with our birthing coverage. Birthing expected to take place around 7.45 a.m. Central time. For now, though, we'll go ahead and bring you some uh, replays of uh, this morning's launch. Again, uh, going flawlessly today from uh, the Wallace Flight Facility in Virginia, sending the second orbital resupply mission on its way towards the International Space Station. So with that, we'll queue up the replays and sign off. This is Mission Control Houston.
three, two, one. And we have ignition. And we have liftoff of Antares for the Orb 2 mission from the Walp Flight Facility delivering Cygnus on its second commercial resupply service to the International Space Station. Attitude is nominal. Core pressures are nominal in the fuel tanks. Power is nominal on the engine. Altitude wants out speed. DVC nominal. Attitude is nominal during flyout. Core pressures are nominal in the commodity tank. We're at 108% power. Pressures are nominal. We're adding helium into the ullage volume of the pressure in tanks to keep them up. To